Hello and welcome to the channel. In this episode, our goal is to present Rorty's argument about why the concept of spirit and correspondence theory of truth and knowledge are problematic for philosophy. These videos represent a personal understanding of Rorty's philosophy. Anything that is not clearly said or you think may not be correctly interpreted, write in the comments. All suggestions come in handy, whether it is about the topics we are talking about or technical things about the video itself and YouTube. At this moment, I want to draw attention to the fact that Rorty's argumentation is dense and that it exceeds the limits of one or few video essays to be represented. I recommend paying close attention to these examples while reading. And at the same time, in order to understand them more, it would be good to get acquainted with authors such as Leif Wittgenstein, Donald Davidson and Willard Van Orman Quine, especially them because Rorty's argumentation is very similar similar to Wittgenstein's argument against private language, Quine's critique of two dogmas of empiricism, and David Zone's critique of the third dogma of empiricism. Rorty gives us an example in which we should imagine that we have discovered a planet on the other side of the galaxy called Antipodia. The people there are identical in everything to people from Earth, but instead of talking about the spirit, they have developed a different vocabulary. By some chance, biology and closely related science were developed the most on that planet. And instead of using philosophical vocabulary to describe what spirit is, they describe it with vocabulary of science. Let's say if you ask them if they feel pain, they will say that certain nerve cells are activated instead of referring to pain as a state of spirit. Rorty with this example gives us the opportunity to see that the phenomena such as pain can be described in several ways. What vocabulary is used or what theory is used to describe a phenomenon in the world depends on things unrelated to what the concept of spirit or subject is. Philosophers who have been in search for the hidden laws of the spirit must be puzzled by how the Antipodeans managed to develop their conceptions without solid metaphysical foundations. Thus concepts such as morality, good, beautiful, truth do not have their foundation in some invisible thing. This example is a direct criticism of what Rorty calls privilege representations in epistemology which were developed by philosophers. The thesis of privilege representation means that the spirit or subject possessed by man is the source of all representations about the world. That is, the subject creates the picture of the world by free given set of rules. It is on philosophy to make these laws explicit and justify correspondence theory. The concept of privileged representations becomes problematic because culturally different societies conceive the world differently because they do it from another theoretical base available for them. For Rorty, describing a phenomenon in the world is related to the theory and the vocabulary that we have at our disposal and not to some hidden cognitive ability that philosophers are looking for. Because if they were privileged representations, then all people would have to describe and understand phenomena in the world equally. That is, everyone should have the same criteria according to which we make judgments about the world and everything inside it. For example, how do we know if a person next to us is in pain? Is it because him and I have the same cognitive mechanism that allows us to know when someone is in pain? If so, then the goal is to show how and what criteria we have when making such judgments. But what if we meet a person who behaves in such a way that we characterize as being in pain? But when we approach it for help, the person tells us that he or she is not in pain, but is happy. Knowing that someone is in a state of pain or having an epistemic criteria for making a judgment about it was not there because we do not possess a pretty given system of rules. If we possessed a pretty given system of rules, then I would have to be able to correctly identify the phenomenon. 
even if we were empirically orientated in our attempts to understand pain, and if we say that pain is not a product of spirit, but rather to say work of neuron cells, in our context that attitude would also be problematic. Because that would mean that if someone behaves in a certain way, that he expresses pain at that exactly moment, his nerve cells must be activated in a certain way. But how can we know that these very cells are activated? Even though we do not have access at the moment to a device that will show us an image of neural cells in the body. And now let's say hypothetically that we have access to some apparatus and that we can see the work of neuron cells. But maybe our subject will not behave in a way that would be characterized as a state of pain. The emphasis here is to link the identification of pain to the vocabulary that is used to describe that behavior. Here we are not talking about mental states being reduced to behavior. What this argumentation leads us to is the following. For Rorty, the criteria according to which we can say that we know that someone is in state of pain is of a social character. We are simply taught to evaluate certain phenomena in the world by growing up in a certain environment that has certain vocabularies at its disposal. Having an epistemic criteria or having knowledge is not internalized in something like a spirit, but is publicly available to be learned and applied, and if necessary, to be changed depending on the context and the need of the people who use that vocabulary. If the criteria is a part of the activity of a society, so are concepts of truth and knowledge. Both concepts for Rorty have their meaning within a community that uses these concepts in a certain way. Having a theoretical approach to understanding knowledge depends on one community. Epistemic criteria and the concept of truth did not fall from the sky. If they were, then they must explain how the diversity of theoretical description of phenomena in the world is equally acceptable, or why there is plurality in our descriptions of the world. The philosophical plan to reduce reality to a single theoretical methodological approach becomes a failed plan for Rorty. The philosopher's dream of discovering some universal law by which the whole world is guided becomes unsustainable. The subject has become a myth, a myth created by philosophers in order to reduce the world to solid foundations. The problem is that its foundation was uniform and tried to include all the diversities in a couple of general categories. The concept of knowledge and truth is not a product of the subject, but a product of choice of tools which we use to present the world to ourselves. Language plays a major role in this for Rorty, because as a language-oriented philosopher, he sees that by turning philosophy towards the study of language, the very attitude of philosophy changes. Namely, philosophy itself is only one of many vocabularies or one of many tools that we have at our disposal to use. Philosophy is only one of many ways we can describe the world, not a super science that unites all other sciences and disciplines. For Rorty, language is the main means by which we describe the world and language is a product of the language community. Having a theory means having only one tool according to which we describe the world. Language as well as the theory that arises from the use of language is only an interpretation of the world in a certain way. The concept of spirit is something made up by philosophers' insistence on one correct way of interpreting the world, one correct correspondence between subject and object. The correspondence theory that was Rorty's target becomes unsustainable because the base on which it is built, the spirit or subject, becomes a myth. For Rorty, concepts such as spirit, 
truth with a capital T, the truth that philosophers were looking for and other philosophical problems arose from a misuse of language. Language in the context of royalty is not a system of already given laws and meanings that we apply, but a social and a communicative tool. In this way, knowledge and truth are created and not discovered. There is not one correct way of interpreting the meaning of truth. That is, there are no theories about knowledge, such as epistemology. Knowledge is not the object that can be studied like an atom. It is important to emphasize that for Rorty, this does not mean that everything we say can be taken as true. The postmodern and relativist idiom that is often imposed to Rorty is correct if we speak of the plurality of theoretical approaches in understanding the world, but not if it means that anything can go. We will touch on this moment more explicitly in the next video. In short, for Rorty, epistemology should become hermeneutics, that is, having knowledge about the world is only an interpretation of the world. Thanks for staying and see you in the next video.